Hey everyone, welcome to Homes of Beginners where I show you how to do repairs around the house yourself. In this video here I'll be showing you how to repair an extension cord. In this situation, admittingly my own fault, I ran over the extension cord with a lawnmower and as you can see it cut off the end. The opposite end is garbage unless you're wanting a very short cord. As long as the cord isn't damaged it can be reused. This is a three conductor wire consisting of a ground, neutral and hot. First is inspecting the cord for any further damage beyond the cut area. Ensure there are no cuts or breaks in the outer casing. If there is, the cord will need to be cut back past this point, ensuring the cord is still safe to use. I do not recommend reattaching the end as the repair may risk being a safety concern. Thankfully there is no other damage to the cord, so I can trim it closely to the cut area. Using heavy cutters, trim the wire. Next is a replacement end. There are two versions, male and female ends. You'll need to purchase the required end which was damaged on your cord. This one I've had kicking around, styles may vary. If you have a three conductor wire, you'll need a three prong plug. Disassembly procedures for plugs will vary. This particular model can have the back side unscrewed. After that is removing the nylon retainer which clamps down on the cord to hold it into place. To access the terminals inside, the screws will need to be removed on the face so the assembly can be split down. If you're looking for a top quality screwdriver with interchangeable tips all kept in one neat package, check out this one from OEM Tools, model number 22588 from Mobile Distributor Supply. A link to this will be included in the video description. An acetate handle that is extremely easy to keep clean along with impact and solvent resistant. Various screwdriver tips along with sockets, it even has a Schrader valve core tip. Once those screws have been removed on the front side, pull it apart. Install the back cap onto the cord first along with the nylon clamp. Each prong will have its own terminal where the wires connect into. The wires are clamped into place using a screw. Ensure these screws are loose first. Using a razor knife, carefully cut the outer casing. Do not cut the insulation on the individual wires, otherwise this will pose a safety risk. Typically you can score enough of the surface where you can break it off at the end, but this will depend on the material. The length which is required to be cut back will depend on the new plug style. It should be hidden inside, so no exposed individual wires on the outside of the plug. Using wire strippers, strip the insulator off each of the individual wires. Using the appropriate sized wire gauge stripper, expose enough of the conductor so it can be fully seated in each of the clamps. The insulation should be against the clamp so there's no risk of any material falling inside where it can create a short. Once the wires have been stripped, the copper does have a black discoloration which means it's oxidized. You can cut the wiring further back to expose a cleaner spot, which I did but unfortunately it was the same case. Instead the conductor can be chemically or mechanically cleaned. I ended up cleaning the exposed conductor with a scotch bite pad until the copper was back to its natural color. As for which wire goes where, green goes to the green terminal which is ground, white is the common which goes to the silver terminal, and black is hot, which goes to the gold terminal. However, if you are unsure or the wiring is a different color, use a multimeter. Set the multimeter to the continuity test. Always test the multimeter first to ensure it's working. You can do this with a cord only or plug in the new replacement cord just to be safe. Continue the test of each of the wires and terminals, then connect as needed. Doing this will ensure there is no broken conductor within the cord, which you can't see from the outside. Insert the midsection onto the cord now. This can't be installed when the wires are connected. When you know the correct position of the wire, insert the wire. Make sure the conductor is fully enclosed in the clamp and then tighten. Make sure it's tight. A loose connection can cause intermediate issues as well as overheating the connection, potentially causing a fire. The conductor is stranded wire. This can be twisted lightly so no strands are pushed off when sliding it into place. Once done, here you can see the connected wires. Next is installing the first section of case. These have alignment tabs so they only fit in one orientation. When it's properly seated, install the screws on the face. Install the nylon retaining clamp. This too has a specific orientation and fits into slots in the outer shell. Finally is installing the rear screw on cap. 
When tightening, this will push down on the nylon clamp, firmly holding the cord into place. Before use, we can verify the cord is functioning correctly with a multimeter. Test the terminals from each side using the continuity test just like before. Once verified it's working correctly, the cord is now ready to be used. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give me a like and drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home DIY videos. Thank you for watching.